Good afternoon, University Church family and guests. It is with great pleasure that I welcome you to Chemo Smith's 40th anniversary organ recital here at the Loma Linda University Church. In 1979, Pastor Louis Venden asked me to find an organist. I was a member of the music staff and gladly accepted this responsibility since I was close friends with two extremely talented organists, Stephen Denmark and Chemo Smith. Both studied with Lad Thomas at USC and both were concert organists as well as church organists. After many months of playing for our church services and accompanying the choir and soloist, we hired Chemo Smith. It was impossible to choose between them, but Steve decided to move back to Northern California after he finished medical school. Chemo began piano lessons and organ lessons at an early age. He advanced so rapidly that he had two lessons per week for both piano and organ. His parents recognized his musical gifts early and sacrificed so he could have the best teachers in Honolulu. When Chemo was 12, he began having excruciating headaches. One night, he passed out on the bathroom floor. He remained unconscious in the hospital for several days. His father never left his side and promised God that if he healed his son, Chemo would serve him. Chemo, you kept that promise. You are a humble servant of God. The doctors never knew for sure what caused the headaches, but thought it was an enlarged blood vessel. In 2010, Chemo almost lost his life to necrotizing fasciitis. Thank you to doctors Jim Dexter, Enrique Gill, Bob Torrey, and Richard Kanga for their expert medical care, and to our wonderful children and friends who encouraged him every step of the way. Thank you for the prayers that people gave all over the world. Thank you so much. God answered our prayers. Chemo is a well-known organist throughout the United States. He has performed with many symphony orchestras, including the Honolulu Symphony, Riverside Symphony, Redland Symphony, San Bernardino Symphony, and symphonies on the East Coast. He's also performed with many choral organizations, including the Los Angeles Master Chorale, where he is featured on their latest CD entitled, A Good Understanding. He has performed throughout Europe, Asia, and South America. He premiered Post Ludio by Ariel Quintana in Vienna. He is also the organist at the First Presbyterian Church of Hollywood. Kibo's favorite venue is playing for church services. He is a master at playing a worship service. Much of what he does in his hymn playing, his accompanying, and his connecting of worship segments is instinctual and inspired in the moment as the service progresses. His effortless and tasteful execution of this week after week makes it such that it is not immediately apparent to the average worshiper. However, when that worshiper mentions that he or she can tell whether Kim was playing or not, it is precisely that that they are unknowingly referring to as the difference between his playing and when others, though equally as skilled, play for the service. When Kimo was hired, I had no idea that three years later we would get married. I tell you, that job of finding an organist thing worked out great for me. <laughs> Our three children and five grandchildren and myself are so proud of him and his accomplishments. But what we love the most is his kind, humble, and the loving person that he is. Please help me welcome to the stage Dr. Chemo Smith.
Thank you all for being here to celebrate with me the 49th, no, 42nd, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself, the 42nd anniversary of the completion and dedication of this Cassavant organ. We are here to <clears throat> commemorate that. And this is also, of course, a personal celebration for me. But this concert isn't about me, even though I am celebrating 40 years of service here to the University Church. It's, I don't want to really call it a recital because I don't consider this a recital. Not really even a concert not here to show off what the organ can do, although you will hear what the organ is able to do, not here to play a program of organ literature classics, although there are some of those, um, not here to show off my skill, although I was joking with some people about the fact that I feel like I'm a little on the hot seat tonight because um, depending on how things go, some might say 40 years, maybe that's enough. <laughs> I hope that's not the case. But what I really am here to do is to celebrate with you what God has done for this church, for this congregation through music through the music ministry of this organ and through me as his instrument. And that is why I have chosen to entitle this concert Gratitude, because it is with great gratitude that I am here um, to present this evening of music for you and with you, because you will be participating with me soon. Some of you may have, or maybe all of you, may have noticed that in this last piece, the hymn, Now Thank We All Our God, was embedded in the piece. And of course, this is um, the season of Thanksgiving, and uh, so it's appropriate that this concert also be um, presented during this season of Thanksgiving. What was very obvious, although most of you probably did not um, notice this or did not realize this, was that in the very first um, fugal section, that four-note theme spelled the word Bach, B-A-C-H. Um, and so that's kind of a segue into the next piece. My first um, little bit of gratitude is to my dad. You heard about my dad from Cheryl. My dad brought home when I was a kid a recording of E. Power Biggs, who was the premier organist of the time, playing the works of Bach. It's the first time I'd ever heard the organ, and I was hooked. And so I would say that it is because of my dad, because of E. Power Biggs and that recording that um, I'm here. And one of the pieces on that recording was the next piece that I'll play, the Toccata Adagio and Fugue in C major.
I'm pleased in the next part of the program to play compositions that are written by Southern California colleagues of mine. I didn't plan it that way, it just kind of happened. <laughs> um, but I thought that was kind of a nice connection um, to be playing these pieces. The first is an arrangement of Great Is Thy Faithfulness by Fred Swan. Frederick Swan used to, was the, uh, formerly the organist at the Crystal Cathedral. He, was al he also currently is um, professor of organ at Redlands University, University of Redlands. Great Is Thy Faithfulness has become one of my favorite, if not my favorite hymn. It's interesting when you, someone like me, for instance, has played hymns all my life. I can recite the words of many hymns by memory just because I've played them so many times. But it's interesting how hymns kind of take on special meaning at different points in your life. And there have been some very dark, times in my life where I wasn't sure that God was faithful, well, or that he was even present, much less faithful. But I have taken the last verse of the hymn, and I'm, I don't know if that I should try to recite it, because being up here, I'm, I'm not sure. But a pardon for sin and a peace that endureth, thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Hope for today, I'm sorry, strength for today, thank you, strength for today, and bright hope for tomorrow, blessings all mine and 10,000 beside. This is something that has taken me through some of those difficult times, and um, so I would like to play that for you, and. At the end of the piece, I would like to, you, for you to turn to your hymnals and pay, uh, to page 100, hymn 100, and sing the last verse of that hymn with me. We'll sing it like a good old Baptist congregation, <laughs> even though we're Adventists. But here is Great Is Thy Faithfulness by Fred Swan.
throughout the years, <clears throat> excuse me, throughout the years here at University Church, I've had the privilege of working with some amazing colleagues. And one of them is Ariel Quintana. Ariel and I met here on this platform when he brought his Opus 7 singers many, many years ago to sing for the service. And um, as so those of you who were in the congregation this morning heard him tell, he came up to me, we didn't know each other at all, and he asked if I could just play like the last um, four bars of a beautiful arrangement of the Lord's Prayer that he had written on the organ. And that was the beginning of a friendship that has lasted now for almost, well, it wasn't the beginning of the friendship because we didn't see each other after that for several years. But we later connected again when we were looking for a new director of music at Hollywood Presbyterian Church, uh, where I have been the organist for 35 years. Um, and um, he, came to, he came to our mind, Cheryl and, and, and my mind, and, and uh, we just happened to meet at a, at a uh, celebration for the Southern California Conference, and it led to a wonderful working and friendship um, relationship that has been now almost 20 years. Um, Cheryl mentioned that I performed, uh, premiered, was, was, had the privilege of premiering this piece, Post Ludio, in uh, Vienna when we went on tour with the Hollywood and Loma Linda Church Choirs. Um, and so I am honored to play that um, for tonight. Um, there were two pieces that I was a little worried about. One was Bach, that's done. And um, I, I told Ariel that I was worried about Bach, but he's not here. <laughs> Uh, in fact, he's really not here. Uh, so, um, uh, uh, Paul Studio, I'm honored to play this.
Thank you, Ariel. Cheryl mentioned in her welcome my illness nine years ago. And I want to add my thanks to hers, to all of you who prayed so fervently and diligently and faithfully for my healing. I should not be here. And it was truly a miracle and truly amazing grace that has brought me here thus far. I want to take, at this point, the opportunity <clears throat> to thank my family, my children here and there, my wife, all of our friends, who went through this very scary time, much of which I don't remember, but they do. <laughs> and um, so I want to play these two arrangements of amazing grace as thanks to God for his amazing grace.
now is a time, now is a time ah, when you have the opportunity to participate as well. Um, uh, this marvelous instrument that can be played so amazingly does take a lot of upkeep. And uh, we solicit your help um, this evening in uh, helping to defray some of those expenses. I am um, going to call the deacons forward to wait upon us at this time. Rather than interrupting um, any music uh, while you're, you know, reaching for your wallet and stuff, you can just listen to me talk while the deacons are collecting the offering. That way you won't miss much. Um, I did want to add my words of appreciation once again for Chemo. He ran away. That's all right. He, he, knew, he knew which part to miss. Um, I was talking with Craig Moore this morning. Is he gonna, are you there, Kimo? I'm sorry, Kimo, to pull you back out. You had a little break there. I was talking with Craig Moore this morning. I'm not stealing your story, Craig. I'm sharing it. Um, and Craig said that when he was 15, which I think was pretty near when you started here, was his first time coming to University Church. And he said he was sitting there singing along on the hymn, and all of a sudden, Chemo did one of these magic modulations that he is so happy to do, and then reharmonized the last verse. And Craig said he just felt himself rising off the floor. He was just overcome. He couldn't even sing anymore. He was just like, I have never heard hymns like this in my life how blessed we are. I tell you, for, for several years, I sat every week in church, and there was rarely a week that went by that the same thing didn't happen to me. I just had to stop singing, like today in Greatest Thy Faithfulness. I couldn't keep singing. And even now, when I'm standing up front trying to lead people, he almost gets me. Eesh, eesh. Oh, this man, he knows how to move, I tell you. He is so gifted. Uh, there's only one thing that moves me more, perhaps, than Kimo playing the organ, and that's Kimo playing the piano. <laughs> I thought lightning might strike or a light fall on me or anything, but I think I'm okay. But anyway, both are this amazing man right here. Um, we do have a video also from Pastor Randy, who, again, is sorry that he could not be here. But let's take a moment to uh, look at that now. Chemo, as I said this morning, I wish that I could be here, could take in the organ concert, could reflect with gratitude on the 40 years of your service as organist at the Loma Linda University Church, and could have the Well, okay. Chemo, as I said this morning, I wish that I could be here, could take in the organ concert, could reflect with gratitude on the 40 years of your service as organist at the Loma Linda University Church, and could have the privilege of congratulating you personally. But this is the next best option, Chemo. I want to say again how much I and we, as a church community, appreciate all that you bring to us. And you bring a lot, Kimo. I've been thinking about when I first became acquainted with your name, and I think it was back when I was working as a chaplain at the medical center, I had become a member of our church, and I listened to Jerry Davis talk about you. We were planning an event that was held at that time that was called Faith Festival, and Jerry was absolutely clear about the fact we had to have chemo as part of this. I think that was my first exposure to chemo Smith. But it's not my last one or my best one. In fact, just recently, chemo, I watched you do something that underlined yet again why we have so much appreciation, gratitude, and affection for you. It was at a memorial service here in our church sanctuary. You happened to be on the piano at the end of the service, and so you were drawing the service to a close in the expert way you're able to do at the piano keyboard. 
You played what had been sung just before that, a sacred piece. And then earlier than that, during the video and the photo collage that appeared of the one who had died, they had played the song Somewhere Over the Rainbow. And as I sat there listening, you do the, do the postlude, if you will. You played the sacred piece, and then you played your postlude piece, and then you wove into it somewhere over the rainbow. And then I think you wove in one or two other pieces that had happened earlier in the service, and probably even the country song, My Heroes Have Always Been Cowboys, was in there somewhere. <laughs> but I sat there just amazed at your ability to draw together disparate musical styles, disparate songs, including the sacred piece that you were finishing the service with, and end up in just a beautiful way. I think that was emblematic of so much you have done. You're just as capable at the organ as at the piano, at the piano as at the organ, and with an entire range of music styles. And chemo at the core of it all is a heart that I have seen many times interested in what worship is doing, what it is doing for God, how we as a people are coming together to worship, what we're communicating, whether or not we're doing it with our full heart, intelligently. There are just so many varied aspects that you bring to what you do. And we at the Loma Linda University Church and many others are richly blessed because of it. So Kimo, thank you. From the bottom of our heart, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for all that you have been and all that you continue to be for us here at LLUC. I wish you and Cheryl God's riches and his best, and here's to the next 40 years. Amen. <laughs> the, I, I know all this appreciation, and, and it breaks my heart to, uh, to break up your beautiful worship service that you have created for us, but it is a worthwhile endeavor, I assure you. As I, I have one more little thing to share, but while I'm doing that, can you find the, the picture of Chemo and Cheryl up there? Do you have that somewhere? If you can get that up there, that'd be great to see too. Um, uh, Chemo has basically three levels in, in the short time that I've worked with him, three levels of you know uh, him, him associating with music. The first is what happens most of the time, and I say, hey, Chemo, got this, it's in this, and this, and this, and this, and you're gonna go to that, and he's like, okay, that's the first level. That's most of the time. The second one is, I come and say, hey, Chemo, da, 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 and he says, okay, uh, do you have music for that? That's the second level, right? And that, that happens rarely. And then the one that I think has happened once since I've been here is, I might need a practice. <laughs> but most of the time, we, we, we never get there. So you are a blessing, sir. It is a pleasure to work with you. And uh, what an amazing experience to have you here. So thank you, sir. Well, um, since I get to work with him, uh, with Kimo, um, I believe about seven days a week, actually. It is seven days a week. Um, I just want to share once again how lucky I am to have you right there at the organ, um, at the piano, uh, making the magic that you make every week. Um, it's hard to articulate how much he helps me every second of rehearsal, every second of rehearsal. He has the ability to, to think what I'm thinking and to give me what I need before I even ask. And that is a luxury that I will be forever grateful uh, for what you do for, for the ensembles that, that, that we are lucky to, to play with, to sing with. Um, and again, it's, it's, it's been a great collaboration. I think uh, I am just beyond words in thankfulness because I guess that one moment right there when I hand you a piece of music, it was years after, 
It was years after that we made the connection. And I asked a couple of people to uh, come and share just a few, couple of minutes, a couple of memories. So Sonia, are you there, Sonia? Um, if you can share a little bit of uh, your experience with... Kimo and Mark and Cheryl and I are all very close friends. And um, one of the things that we did for quite a long time, this was before chemo got sick, is we would get together every week for dinner and we would take turns bringing our favorite pies. One week it would be chemo and Cheryl, the next week it would be us. <laughs> we kind of had to back off of the pies and cut out the sweets for a while as chemo was recovering. But one of the things, I'm sure you've all had that time in your life where you were sobbing and you couldn't stop crying. I had that experience the day that the pastors and some of us as friends and family were circled around Chemo's bed when he mentioned his illness when he was in the hospital. I could not stop crying. <laughs> the thought of losing you, <laughs> it just was unbearable. <laughs> and if anyone ever questions if God answers prayer, here's your answer. <laughs> God does answer prayer, and chemo is here as a result of God's prayers, and we are very grateful that he's here with us. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you. And we also ask Kavika. Kavika, your brother. So, Kavika, where are you? Um, anyway, uh, I had a pleasure of meeting Kavika as we got acquainted with chemo, so... <laughs> Twins. <laughs> you know, I almost wore a white shirt with a green tie tonight. <laughs> so, um, if you're wondering what I'm going to say tonight, you and I already have something in common. And this is going to be the first time that both of us hear what, what I have to say. Um, they did ask me a few days ago to, to say a few words about you. And what came to mind was Charles Dickens, and it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, <laughs> like it usually is with siblings. Um, let me talk about some of the best of times. Um, you know, I always looked up to Chemo. Um, he was always, to me, representative of the exotic. Uh, when he graduated from high school, he went to Leeward Community College. That was 21 miles away. How could somebody drive 21 miles every day to go to school? That was just amazing to me. Because when you grow up on a little island, 21 miles is a long way away. And then he flew to California. California is even further away. And when he came back, he had changed. Now, don't get me wrong, he was always cool. But now he was cool plus. <laughs> You came back urbane, sophisticated. You had a different hairstyle. You, you wore stylish clothes. You had a convertible sports car. Do you remember that? Yes. That it was small enough that he could drive underneath the parking arm of the parking lot so he didn't have to pay the parking fees. And I always missed him when he was gone. And I was so happy when he would come back. And my father was something that you would call among the tech people an early adopter. And he bought a cassette, a compact cassette deck. And we used to record letters back and forth instead of writing them. And I wish we, we still had those. I wish we had those back. Um, and I was always excited when he came home. I was always excited when we had the, um, when we uh, got the recordings. Now, let me talk a little bit about the worst of times, <laughs> because, you know, you've heard about people who suffer for their art. Our family suffered for his art. <laughs> Whenever he made a mistake when he was practicing, he would go back and start from the beginning. And I still do. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember our brother Keone going, please, God, let him get it right this time. <laughs> and... I was shuffled off into my bedroom, and I had to be quiet because Kimo was making an audition tape. 
and I couldn't watch Gilligan's Island, and I was really upset about that. <clears throat> One of the worst times, though, and I, I don't know if this has been spoken about, you know that chemo has had actually two serious illnesses in his life. One you already know about. There's one that happened when you were 12. Uh, it was during workers' meeting, and um, I believe you fell into a coma, and nobody was sure what was wrong. And my parents, my mom, prayed and said, please save my son. He will be dedicated to your work. And he came out of the coma and said, what are all you people doing here? I believe that God has a plan for you, and I believe we are the beneficiaries of that plan. And I don't think it goes too far to say that I think even the angels put aside their harps and close their eyes and are mesmerized by the beautiful music that you create in the spaces, the empty spaces between earth and heaven. We, we've hijacked you long enough. Again, sorry about that. We brought you a water bottle because I wasn't sure if you made it out to get a drink. So anyway, let, let's hear it one more time for this great man right here. Are you okay? Yeah, do what you got to do, man.
Cheryl mentioned that um, when she was asked to suggest an organist, she suggested two, um, Stephen Denmark and, and myself, and I was second choice. And uh, so I guess to um, make me feel not so bad, she married me. Um, This is her favorite piece, and so I had to play this for her. Um, I, I want to take this opportunity. I, I know it's running late, and I'm so sorry. Um, but I just want to take the opportunity to thank the organists that have worked alongside me. I have not done this alone. Um, and so I want to read a list. I know I'm taking a chance when I read a list because I'm afraid I'm leaving someone out, but I've done my best in my feeble 40 year here in mind um, to remember. And so I'm just going to read this list. Francis Bell, Linda Brown, Del Case, Elsie Chan, Sylvia Chang, Grace Chung, Angela Craft Cross, Harold Doring, Carrie Frazier, Arlene Kluster, Jan Webb McQuiston, Thomas Melton, Kevin Nick, Virgin, Virgil Nielsen, Beverly Olson, Heysung Park, Angelica Prodan, Ken Rudolph, Donna Sampson, Olga Schmidt, Peter Schwelt, Roger Schwelt, Janet Smith, Chris Chai, Stanley Walker, Harry Wong, Arlen Wareham, Gerald Wareham, Beverly Weirs, Gary Weirs, Carlene Weimer, and Helen Chan Young. That's 31 people. And I know that I probably left someone out, and I'm so sorry. But this is just a, 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 an indication of the kind of commitment we have here um, for people who want to and, and, and have served this church now and in the past. So I want to thank them. I want to thank especially Donna Sampson, who's here every Sabbath to turn pages for me on the post -it. Those of you who are here know that. She is also one of my longest, uh, longest time students. I think 25 years, something like that. Um, my, my daughter Mallory just had her 32nd birthday and Donna started studying with me when Mallory was born, right before that. And um, she has been so faithful, not just to, to assist me, but also uh, playing for this church. Also Linda Brown, who played for so many weeks while I was ill. And, uh, and, and Grace Chung, who has also played in times when I have not been able to in my recent illnesses and so forth. So thank you, thank you so much to all of you. The next piece I would like for you to participate again with me. You see in your program uh, indications of verse one, two, et cetera. Um, these are variations on the, the hymn tune, Oh God, Our Help in Ages Past. And I think that's appropriate for an occasion like this. Um, if you will join me in singing those verses after uh, each of those variations. It is on page uh, hymn number 103.
Kimo invites you all to a uh, small reception right outside the lobby there. Uh, that's young adult Friendsgiving, so don't get confused. But uh, yeah, yeah, right out the door is there. Let's bow our heads for a benediction. God, who is father of all that is good and perfect in the world, for music that brings us to your throne, we say thank you for this amazing instrument that has served the Loma Linda University Church community for 42 years, we say thank you. And for Kimo Smith, who has touched our souls with music from above for 40 years, we say thank you. Our hearts are full and overflowing. May we carry that thankfulness with us to spill over onto everyone we encounter this week. In your name we pray. Amen.